Okay, let's see if this works. I'm really scared. My first stream. Oh yeah. Just watching if it works. Oh yeah, cool. I think we are live. <laughs> That's cool. Can I see myself? Oh yes. Oh no, I can see myself dancing. That's so weird. Look at this. Oh no, you cannot see it. <laughs> I have absolutely no experience streaming. I think you can tell. So I don't want to hide the fact that I'm an absolute noob streamer. So better make it look crappy on purpose because then I don't have to pretend that I can do this. <sighs> okay, so um, I usually highly edit my videos because my English is really bad and I'm a really cringy person from time to time. So this is just, this will just be uh, completely unedited. So that's gonna be interesting. And sometimes I'm really stupid and I forget what I'm saying. <laughs> so just <laughs> to warn you what you're getting into here. So. We're streaming game development today, yeah, and we're definitely going to take it a little slow because it's my first stream and we're just, just, just going to see if this works. So there's already a person in the chat. Wow, this is amazing. Let me write something real quick. I didn't expect that. Hi. Ow. Dark Shadox, I think I have seen you a couple of times in my comments already. Um, but I have a really bad memory, so I, I'm not sure. You have a weird clown icon. Hi. So, uh, I hope that not that many people will watch because as I've just said, I'm a complete noob and I will probably mess this up a lot. So, <laughs> just to be warned. <laughs> I'm streaming at a time where nobody should be watching. I'm doing that on purpose, obviously. So, um, let me fix my setup here real quick. And then I will just do some game dev. And I can usually not focus on multiple things at once. So I will probably forget how to talk while programming. Okay, so far this was horrible, which is nice. Um, one person in the chat, can you tell me, is the sound okay? Can you hear me? Or am I muted? What's going on with the sound? Also, this mic records all of my mouth sounds, so just get ready for that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I usually try to edit that out, but I cannot do that on stream. Oh, you're ill. So, okay. So you're the lucky one who gets to watch this. <laughs> uh, the lucky one in quotation marks, because this is not going to be all that interesting. Okay, sound is good. That's fine, because I was afraid it was a bit too silent or something like this. So let's just uh, switch to the, oops, to the different camera setup. So you can see my screen. Let me see if this works. Yes. So now I look really narrow and, but that's actually the correct ratio. <laughs> the other ratio was just completely broken. So now I should look kind of normal. Um, yeah, we're, I'm just doing a bit of development, nothing special. I think I'm gonna do a bit of level design. And of course, I'm very happy to interact with you. I'm not a skilled streamer, so yeah, we'll see how this goes. If I can multitask all of this. Actually, the stream doesn't have that much of a delay, at least in my window here. Pretty, pretty small, looks, looks pretty solid, cool. So far, this seems to work out quite well. Mm, so let's just try to play. And if this, this works too, <laughs> if recording this works too, then I'm a really happy man. So, can you see this? Yes. That's the first level. And one thing I usually mess up or I mess up sometimes in my game, a mistake I have made a couple of times before is that I don't really have enough options to do any good level design. And I'm feeling I'm 
heading down the same road if I'm not careful. So we'll have to come up with some elements that we can place in the levels that make levels a bit more interesting. So far we just have a couple of different enemies and a couple of different spawners and honestly doing interesting level design with that is pretty hard, if not to say impossible. So we have to come up with something. I just recently designed a new level, this one right here, because all the other ones were too easy. I think maybe you've seen that one in in one of my videos, in my sp speed video or something like that. And this one is quite challenging, even for me. <laughs> so just in case there's anybody watching who wonders how this game works and I will probably also upload this to YouTube. So doesn't hurt to explain it one more time, I guess. You, it's pretty simple, you just have two mouse buttons and with the mo one mouse button you turn your creatures into eggs and with the other mouse button you make them explode and the goal is to kill all of the orange creatures here. Oh yeah, and we have, have this weird end game problem where the game gets really slow because you still have some creatures and there are a ton of enemies. So let me show you, Let's see, in theory I can still win this because I can still duplicate my units here over and over again, but this part is just not all that fun because it takes forever. And maybe this is one of the problems we'll address in the stream, but mainly I just want to get some new elements to do some cool level design with. Let's see what we can do. Didn't beat it of course. So here are all of the levels we have so far. Actually one interesting mechanic that seems to work out quite well is all those little cat creatures. Don't know if I have shown them. Oh, I skipped them. Damn, I have to restart. <laughs> little cat creatures. Because they don't come out of a spawner, but they actually split as well. So that's pretty interesting. Here they are. So at first you think, oh, that's just two enemies, that's really easy, no problem. And obviously they have weird graphics, weird test graphics. But then they start splitting and they become more and more exponentially, so you better get rid of them before there are too many. But actually it's not that hard. But quite interesting and I need more different stuff like that, things that I can do level design with. I also want to be able to change the start position of the of the player creature thingies that would allow me to do a bit more level design. At the moment they always start in the center and that's probably not the best idea. So mm, if anybody has a cool idea for an enemy or some sort of thing we could put in the levels, feel free to write them into the chat because that's the cool thing about streaming, isn't it? That you can interact with your viewers, that's what makes it interesting. Otherwise you could just watch a more polished and more edited video, I guess. Um, so um, there, I, I have a lot of things in mind that I could do, but I want to do something that's somewhat interesting so maybe let's come up with a new enemy type and we're not trying to make it look perfect just prototyping new ideas and trying to get this a little further so I'm gonna create a new sprite mm, spur bubble spur enemy bubble Boop, 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 boop. So let's draw something beautiful, shouldn't we? I'm gonna draw a tentacle monster. 
or just a blob? Should we just do a blob? Yeah, let's just do a blob. Beautiful. Doesn't need to look good. Then we just adapt the collision mask. And I like keeping it on a rectangle because that is the fastest way to do collision detection. All the other ways like ellipse are a lot slower and also it doesn't really matter all that much most of the time. You don't even realize that the collision mask is not pixel perfect or at least as long as you do it in a way that favors the player of course. If you make the collision mask of an enemy like this then the player will definitely complain if he hits the box. But if you do it like this then literally nobody will complain about it. So that's fine. So then I have a cool enemy folder and this project by the way is an absolute mess at the moment because I've, I'm trying so many different things and I'm not really trying to keep this um, in a good state. I'll have to do some cleaning up someday. So create an object and which sprite shall we use? Maybe we should just duplicate one of the enemies we have so far. Maybe that would be easier. Okay. Why does the enemy parent not have any HP? It's, that's very weird. Uh, maybe I should really just start cleaning this out a little because for example, I have so many obsolete enemies here <laughs> from a previous version. Let's just delete those two folders. I don't need those anymore. Yep, go away. Very nice. Those enemies are all in game still. And then actually I, there are a couple of variables that I definitely want to put in the parent. Or do I? Ah, I guess it's fine. For now, we don't need to bother with that. OBJ enemy blob blob no I wanted to call it blob no <laughs> as you can see I'm definitely a very advanced programmer well, let's put that in here the correct sprite and then we need uh, HP equals 50 and then HP max equals HP. So why do I have two HP variables? That's just because the health bar needs to know how much HP the enemy had when it started. Otherwise I cannot calculate how big the health bar should be. So what I want to do with these enemies, I want it to grow consistently. So yeah, actually maybe we should use a more precise collision mask for this now that I think about it. Let's just switch this to precise. And then we just tell this object image x scale. By the way, can you see what I'm typing? It's probably not that all, all that interesting anyway. So mm. yeah, we'll add maybe one every two seconds. And then we also wanted to have a random rotation at the start. So we're gonna type image angle equals random. <laughs> then we also need it to show a health bar. So we just copy some code from this really simple code 
and we do this in draw draw GUI. So I just ask here if the enemy already lost some health, then we show the health bar. If it has full HP, I don't show the health bar. Mm, how big should the health bar be? Huh. Yeah, let's just keep it like this for now, but I'm not really sure if that will work. And then they probably also need to destroy themselves when they have no more HP. Yeah, stuff like that should usually be in the parent. But that's just some boring cleanup work I'll have to do someday. <laughs> so. Now we are almost ready to test this. Let's create a new level. Um, why is this level called 111? That's not quite right. This should be 14 and this should be... Mm, it's an experimental level, so let's call it E01. First experimental level. Uh, now we have to select the correct layer and just delete everything on that layer. <laughs> because I don't want any spawners here. Oh, this layer system of Game Maker Studio 2 is actually really confusing. To be honest, I really preferred the old system with the depth variable. It was way easier to design your levels with that. I guess it has advantages to do it this way, but personally, I definitely prefer the old system. Because now I have to search for the correct layer. What's the correct layer? Enemies. Now I can, oops, drag my blobs in there. I want the median point of them is not at the correct position, so we'll have to fix that. Oh, hi, we have another viewer. Oh, that's, that's awkward. <laughs> what are you doing here? Uh, Dumble Pete, hey. Uh, let's chat a bit. Oh, where can I chat? Hi. Yeah, totally. The layer system is so weird. Or I, I think, no, it's not hard to understand. It's easy to understand how it works, but using it feels, oh, I don't know. It feels, just feels more complicated. So, um, did I actually fix the medium point of the sprite? No, because you distracted me. Damn it. Also, Game Maker, what the hell? Where's my sprite? It's just weird, weird things like this that really uh, make this program annoying to use sometimes. I really like the changes, a lot of the changes they made to the UI, but it just feels so bugged and buggy sometimes, so I hope they fix that over time. Yeah, actually they have a way to to create um, objects on a certain layer, but uh, to create them with a depth, but that also just creates a layer. And I mean, I did a lot, I used this depth variable quite frequently also, just if you spawn objects, sometimes it's really cool to give those objects a custom depth variable. For example, if you do some sort of pseudo 3D stuff, then you have a really, really good control over what's drawn on the top and on what's drawn behind. That's not really possible anymore. For example, what really bothers me in my game is when I um, create X, the new X are actually under the old X. I don't know if I can, can show you this. Let's try. And I would definitely prefer it to be the other way around. Why should the new X be under the older X? That just makes no sense. Yeah, duh. obviously I need to stack some X on top of each other. <laughs> don't know if I can show you. Okay, fly over here. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think you can see it a little bit. See, the new egg is is under the old one. That's so so annoying and I don't want to make 1000 layers just to get this working correctly. And actually I, I'll have to do the same thing with the background because I want the background to have some sort of 3D-ish zoom and I need to make all the little dots in the background uh, objects or maybe I can use particles but they, I need them to be sorted in a way that the new, no actually in this case it's good when the new ones are behind the other ones. So in that, this case it works, but I think there are a lot of cases where it's just super annoying. Um, okay, but I fixed the medium point of my enemy now, so in theory we should be able to test this now. Let's do a couple more of these blobs. All right, let's play. <laughs> That's always one of the most entertaining moments when you try new stuff. That's actually one of the things I like about Game Maker. You can try new stuff really quickly and yeah, of course it doesn't work. Why, sh why, why should it work? Ah, because I forget to set the parent for this object. That makes sense. So the parent should be Enemy parent. Cool. Mm -hmm. No major fails yet. I'm so proud of myself. Yeah, kind of weird. I agree. Um, this is the boss. Also quite fun. Oh, oh no, <laughs> they are growing so quickly. <laughs> Uh, but they don't kill my ex, so I think I'm good. <laughs> Why don't they kill my ex? Did I code? Ah, oh, yeah. Oh. So that's the annoying part. If you don't parent your stuff correctly, you need to copy everything over. So that's something we should definitely put in the parent. So. Yeah, let's just do that right now. If the parent collides with um, races exposed, so the X, then we just destroy them. <laughs> and why do we set time equals global time? I don't know what. Why do we do this? Uh, I think that's obsolete. We can delete that. That's what I mean by cleaning up my project. There's just some that's just some dead code that has absolutely no use anymore. <laughs> oh no! And yeah, they are also growing way too quickly. So let's stop this. Oh, last second. Uh, let's say they only grow about. Uh, one fifth of the speed. <gasps> hmm, that could be an interesting mechanic. And one weird thing about the current version of Game Maker that I don't really understand is why do I see the the outlines of those red things? Why do have do they have a black outline? They're completely red. I should shouldn't see anything there. I know that that this it disappears when I click on don't interpolate colors between pixels in the settings. This disappears, but then also doesn't interpolate the colors between the pixels. So I want the colors to interpolate, but without these weird art artifacts. That would be very nice. If you have any idea how to do that, please let me know. Otherwise, I'll have to write the support because this is annoying. 
Maybe but this is because the transparent pixels next to the red ones are black. And that's how this artifact is created. So I guess we can, we can try fixing it like that. See if that works. Mm. But how do we do that? Can we tr change the opacity? Let's change it to one and fill this. Can I also change the opacity to zero? So now it should be red, but transparent, right? Because if you're not aware of it, even transparent pixels still have a color. Just the alpha value is down, so no, I want the alpha value to be on zero actually. So oh, maybe I need to use color replace. Okay, it's on zero now. No, it's still on one. <laughs> How do I get it on zero? Oh. Let's see if this works though, because maybe we're lucky. Yeah, I think if you draw very big sprites, you can definitely reduce the artifacts. That's true. But there needs to be another way. Let's let's find out if my strategy worked. Mhm. Mm <laughs> actually, it worked. Okay, that's actually good to know. So, I don't need to write the support team. Whew. Thanks God. So now uh, the weird artifacts are gone. Obviously the edges still look super duper weird, so we cannot do that in the final game. And the collision marks masks seem to be off as well. What's the collision mask? But um the problem right now is that there's still a little bit of red around the, the things. I would like it to be really transparent. If I use the color picker right here, I still have uh, one alpha. I want to have zero alpha, please. No. Uh. Mm. Yeah, whatever. We'll fix that later. <laughs> I think if I don't create my graphics with uh, GameMaker, but with Photoshop, this will probably be way easier to fix. Um, yeah. Why is the collision mask so weird again? I wanted to have automatic. Ah. No, oh, game maker, you're so annoying. Why? Why are you closed? No. <laughs> um, because obviously now I filled the entire sprite with a little bit of red that just has one opacity. Now everything's filled, but ah, luckily there's a tolerance. That's nice. So now it should work again. And I would really like to get rid of the rest of the red, but as this is just a test graphic, who cares? Seriously, I don't care. <laughs> okay, maybe a little. Next. So if you look very closely, you should see a red box around the sprites now, but as it's just one one opacity, probably pretty hard to see. Mm. 
Mm, I think they should have exponential growth because it feels like it slows down way too much. So let's not do plus, but let's multiply this by 1.0001 or something like this. And let's see how that feels. Oh, that's probably way too slow, but we'll see. Are they moving? No, they're not. Let's try 0.002. Ooh. Okay, this looks fine. Um, okay, this looks scary. Uh, hello, hi. What are you doing here? Oh, okay. This <laughs> was too fast. Uh, let's try half of that. Or maybe we, we can draw a little bigger sprite because it looks really weird if it gets that pixelated. Let's just do 1000 times 1000. Okay, so we have to redraw this. Oh, all the work. <laughs> I have to start from the very beginning. How could you do this? My beautiful image. This looks fine. And I have to multitask, which is not one of my strengths. I think you can tell. Mm, hello, Gamaker, where is the collision mask? Okay, here it is. Now let's uh, do the same trick again and let's just fill in some one opacity red around the sprite. Very nice game maker, very nice. And then obviously it has to start way smaller. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Uh, I think the median point is off again because they look like they're moving in weird directions. <laughs> and the uh, aiming missiles are also not quite hitting the enemies. <laughs> um, yeah, well. Let's put that to middle center. And actually next up I want to create an enemy that spawns these blobs, so that's gonna be interesting as well, I think. And as I've said, if you have any ideas, we are live now, I can react to you, I hope. Dip, 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 dip. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think this works 
quite nicely, but I will cut the HP of those things in half. And you know, maybe they could grow a little, little more slowly. Definitely less HP. So we can use more of them in our room. Let's do 25. And then I also have a nice idea for the health bars. So let's just do another one. And we're just gonna draw two sprites for one enemy. Enemy bubble center. So they're gonna have a center point, I think. Probably a good idea to show that center point to the players. Ah, what the problem is, will probably overlap. Let's try anyway. 50, 50, not 5050, no, no, no. Oh, that's actually really small. So now we can go into the draw event of this one. First of all, we write draw self so we can still see the enemy. And then, I just write draw sprite spur enemy bubble center. What's wrong? Ah, sub image, yeah, of course. Of course. So now we should see both uh, the growing thingy and the center of the growing thingy. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I cannot design levels like these, no. But actually there's a good solution. I just use <laughs> uh, the sprite instead and then in the create event I tell him sprite index equals sprite enemy bubble center. Ooh, ooh. Very nice. Let's hit the room again. Ooh. Okay, so <laughs> that looks a lot better. Now we should be able to handle a lot more of them. I hope. <clears throat> Loading. I don't want it to load. Yeah, that looks perfect. Absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. Just how I wanted it to look. Because I wrote the wrong sprite here. Why didn't you stop me? This needs to be the big sprite, which is uh, enemy bubble. We already have the sprite center. <laughs> Jonas is multitasking. Oh yeah. Okay. That's about how I wanted it to look. Obviously there needs to be a way better effect for how they disappear. 
also it's gonna be quite interesting how they look in the first place when I try to create them out of DAW. Guess they're gonna have to be quite high resolution pictures. Okay, so this I think this is a fun, fun mechanic. Quite enjoyable. So let's make an enemy that spawns these things. And for that I'm actually too lazy to create a new enemy. Let's just duplicate here my object enemy stupy. Duplicate it. And let's call it enemy blobber. So here you can see my naming skills at work as well. I name my objects absolutely flawlessly. <laughs> so um, here we have Mr. Blobber and when Mr. Blobber dies he is uh, supposed to spawn and blob only when he dies. So maybe that adds some more strategy to when you actually kill him. Or at least that's what I hope. Uh, now I have to create it on X, Y, and then for the layer, I use layer underscore enemy enemies yes hmm. maybe we should do them on yeah see that what's uh, what I hate about it now I have to create a new layer for those stupid blob thingies just because they need to be under the normal enemies but above the spawn spawner so yeah guess we're gonna need a new layer now really annoying and it's gonna get really really weird someday there are gonna be so many layers and nobody will know anything uh, so let's call this layer enemies blob and then it's gonna go under the normal enemy layer and then I have my macros here where I write down all the layer names so I just I can use auto correct to use them let me make a layer enemy and we're gonna call this blob Was that how I called the layer? I think so. Yeah, so all of these things can stay here. Let's create a new room. Experimental room number two. Let's call it E2. And when I create a new layer, why is it not inherited correctly? Game maker, please. Do I need to go in every single room now and have click the inherit button again? No, thank God. Because that would really annoy me. Oh, and now I made another common mistake. I closed the, the room options, <laughs> the room options tab. And I wonder if there's actually a good way to get them back now because in previous versions you just couldn't get it back without uh, completely resetting the layout. Yeah, so let's just do that. Probably the fastest way to fix it. And then I want to have this over here. Thank you. Delete all of this loop. and so let's actually add a couple of our new enemies called enemy blobber. Oh, 
They're the big ones. Damn, I wanted to copy the small ones. <laughs> oh, oh no, are they the small ones? They have the same sprites, so it's prob you can probably not tell in this view. Probably they are the small ones. So can pack in a couple more of them. And one thing I forgot, if, if they touch one another, we have to change that event to the same object. They push away from each other so they don't stack on top of each other too much. I want them to spread a little bit and they're stacked on top of each other. Okay, let's just try if this works. It probably doesn't in the first attempt. But that's just how it goes. Wow, we have few viewers. No, four viewers. That's amazing. <gasps> At one point we had six viewers. I literally can't believe it. What's going on here? And why is it not playing? Compile errors? Mm -hmm. Why did I write but here? It's meant to be bot. <laughs> oh, here's something missing. Oh yeah, <laughs> the kind of object I want to create. <laughs> um, oops. I'm so focused. Guys, please interact with me. I feel so alone. I have no friends. I'm so alone. Um, no, this one. Yes, thank you. So now it's actually really a problem if I let them get too close because then these stupid growing things are pretty close to my my egg farms as well so that's <clears throat> that's a kind of interesting interesting interaction there i think and once again the same problem we don't have all that many eggs anymore and it just takes a lot of time Maybe there should be a fast forward button. That might actually be a really good idea. Uh oh. <gasps> Interaction! Oh, thank you! I'm the happiest person. <laughs> Interesting, interesting, interesting. I think we have to deal with that speed problem next because it's really bothering me. if I intentionally don't attack them now and wait until they are all in the center. Just trying to get them low. I think there are some really cool strategies you can do with this. No, go into the center. Ah, 
They don't go into the center. Now let's kill them. Oh. <sighs> Maybe this wasn't the best strategy. <laughs> Oops. Uh, maybe I should try to kill them one at a time, one after another. So there aren't that many of these mushroom thingies at once. But I like this, you know, you have to, s have to strategize a little bit, or at least that's what I feel like. So let's try to kill them one after another, maybe that works. Okay, another interaction, that's awesome, but I can't read because I'm very focused on playing my own game. I'm so sorry. So before I kill the next ones, let's try to get off those mushrooms here. Okay, I think this is actually the best strategy to go about it, probably. Oops. But unfortunately, none of my creatures are flying in that direction. So I can't really get rid of them. Okay, here is one. And another pacing problem we have in a lot of levels is that the further you go, the easier it gets. Usually it should be the other way around, that the tension rises at the end of the level, but now it's less and less enemies, so it gets easier and easier the further we go. But one way I tried to fix this is with the spawners, because the spawners spawn more and more enemies. At the end of the level they spawn enemies really quickly, and at the beginning very slowly, so that helps a little bit. But just in general that's Still a bit of a pacing problem, I think. Mm, possible ways to fix this would be to put the player on a timer, so you only have a limited time to beat the level. But I don't know how good of an idea that is. Okay, let's actually read what uh, what's in the comments. Yeah, bye, bye, bye. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around, Mr. Dark Shadox. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Have a good sleep. Try to get healthy. So what's next? What do we do next? How about we do some meditation in between to refocus our thoughts? How about that? <laughs> okay, I guess that was cr enough cringe for the next hour or so, so let's just keep going. The speed problem, right. Let's fix the speed problem. As you might have seen in uh, my last video, I already have a way to change the speed of the game. Actually, it's not implemented in, in this new enemy type, so let's do that real quick. We have to... This, the growth of this has to depend on the speed as well. So we just do... Zgr. Game speed. And right power. So 
So this is some very complicated math. Nobody but me can understand this, so I won't even try to explain how it works. It's way too complicated. Okay, actually, it's not that complicated. <laughs> Here, this uh, game speed just um, that's basically the game speed variable. So if we run the game with twice the game speed, then this will basically be 1.008 times 1.008. So how do you call that in English? The, the exponent is uh, this variable. So it's basically just if the, the game speed's twice as high, it's like multiplying with this number twice. That's basically it. Nothing too complicated. Mm. So, game speed is currently 1. So I wonder what happens if we actually make the game speed dependent of, of the amount of units we have. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? I think so. So let's do rip. Oops, hey, come on. Instance number. How's the object called? Object race one. Maybe we can use the basic parent, I'm not sure. Let's have a short look. Which parents they have here. Mm -hmm. It says the basic parent and the egg has the exposed parent and the exposed parent has Raise parent. Okay. Mm, then we just have to add them up. Exposed and basic. We need to have those add those two up. Where's my script again? Enemy and uh, not enemy race basic. Actually, it's just called race because there were multiple classes, and actually, I regret that I didn't call them classes because that's a bit more neutral word, but yeah, I'm really bad at naming stuff. So, <laughs> and I didn't expect anybody to see my variables here as well, but yeah, obviously you do. Do you think it's racist to call variables race? I think it's probably not the worst thing in the world, but uh, also doesn't feel that comfortable. Now let's call the other one. Exposed, right. So that's the number of enemy. We have eight in the beginning. So let's divide it by eight. So that's just a little experiment. In theory, the game should be going faster and faster the more creatures we have on the screen which is obviously exactly the other way around than we want it to be, but still, as an experiment, still works. Oh, they all had different speeds because they were all created at a different time. That's no good. So unfortunately we have to pack this here 
into the step event which is not exactly perfect for the performance but yeah who cares who cares about performance <laughs> really sad um okay that's interesting <laughs> uh, did go a lot faster than i expected why did it go that fast ah because the divide by eight magically disappeared who deleted that mm -hmm. Okay, um, why is the other thingy missing? Now the game speed was on zero because there were no more creatures. I don't know. Race. Underscore. <sighs> Seriously. When did you write the sounds great? I didn't quite get that. I think I missed it. Did it make some great sounds? Oh, <laughs> it's getting really fast. Uh, but it's a nice proof of concept. So I think in theory this works, but obviously it needs, needs to be the other way around. So instead of dividing this by eight, we just could add one so it does never get zero and then we could divide something by this value for example how about eight because that's the value we start with <laughs> so now it should get slower and slower the more enemies uh, the more creatures we have so if make them explode suddenly they are moving way faster. That could be interesting. Let's go to a really hard level so we can test it properly. Ah, when I meditated, yeah. We can do another meditation break later. Okay, this is getting too slow a bit too quickly. <laughs> is it still moving? <laughs> nice. Mm, so that's going to be quite a bit of a challenge to balance this out correctly. Maybe if we add eight. What do we want the speed to be when there's only one creature? Then it should probably be about two times or three times as fast. So we can probably add a little more here and then divide by 10. Maybe we can even add 4, 4 and 8 is 12. And then I think we definitely have to clamp the value. And this formula is getting really long. but. No, who cares? Minimum speed is probably 0 0.25 and the maximum is should be 3. Huh. 
hardcore level. Where's the hardcore level? <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so I can feel it to slow down again. Can feel it slow down again. Yeah, it should probably be a, a bit faster by default. So what if we just multiply the entire thing times two? What happens? That's just trial and error. <laughs> I didn't expect that I would put some serious thought into this, did you? No. Just throwing stuff against the wall. <laughs> okay, now it's getting a bit more relaxing. Not so fast anymore. Why do all of those creatures have so little HP? I didn't I didn't hit them, did I? That's weird. Why do they spawn with reduced HP? are the stupid enemies and they have 5 HP oops this should probably be the other way around 5 here and then just HP max equals HP oh maybe that's why it was so easy before <laughs> Uh, and we also have a dynamic, dynamic uh, game speed, so no, 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 that doesn't work. We need to go to the enemy HP function because the HP of the enemy is also dynamic. We don't want that right now. We just want the original HP, please. Thank you very much. So maybe it's a little bit too fast in the beginning. But also what do you want to do in the beginning other than splitting your stuff? So this is a bit more comfy speed. And now if we get into that weird end game situation we can see how it feels ho hopefully a lot better. Okay, I can feel how it speeds up. But I played a little too bad this time so it will probably not work out or will it? But oops. The pacing actually feels a lot better. I only think in the beginning it should be slower, but for the end game I think this is pretty much exactly what I wanted. be able to do this. Uh, 
Uh, maybe not. Okay, see, but at least it didn't take that long to figure out that I lost. I lost really quickly. In, in the beginning, it's too stressful. So let's fix that. Also, let's maybe, maybe not every object should calculate this manually. Let's just make a global variable for this. Global.gamespeed. And then we go into our control object. At the beginning, we just set global.gamespeed to whatever, who cares, zero. And then in the step event, we calculate the actual game speed, so not every object has to do it. Et voila. And then we can also have, do we already have a time variable? Oh, yep, we have a time variable, that's nice. So we can use that to limit the speed in the beginning. That should make it a lot less stressful. So I think we shouldn't make this formula any longer. Let's just do another clamp. Oh no, actually we don't need a clamp. We just need a main function. And then the maximum speed in the beginning is, so should just be one. So just add one plus global punct time. And this can increase slowly. So the maximum speed increases slowly as well. Should probably take about a minute, hmm, about more like 30 seconds. So. What's 60 times 30? 1,000... Um, 1,800? Yep. That sounds about right. I have forgotten one of the most important streaming rules of all time. Never do calculations in your head on stream. The other golden rules of streaming never eat a banana on stream and the third one was I forgot the third one but I'll I'll remember later mm. see now I, I lost where I was again where was I I think I fixed something in the game speed variable so let's try that if the beginning is a little more <sighs> calm Yep, that looks better. Well, that's dynamic game speed. Oh, yeah. Now it should slow a bit, slow down because I am getting more and more creatures should already probably be under the original game speed. I think this this approach makes a lot of sense. Because if you have a lot of creatures, it also we, we often also had the other extreme that it got too stressful and was too stressful to manage all of your creatures. So oops, this probably a pretty good way to deal with this pacing problem. But why doesn't it get faster now? Um, where do I increase the time variable? Ah, oh, it only increases about one every second. So that makes sense. Then we can divide this by 60 again. That makes uh, 300 seconds, please. Or let's try, oh no, wait, 30 seconds. Am I stupid? Yes, I think so. That was way too long.
I want to beat this level. Can't be that difficult, can it? I've beaten it before, so I think I will really try to focus and beat this now. <laughs> I believe. Oh. So I like the pacing, I like the speed so far. And you don't even realize that the speed is varying. <laughs> That's probably because it isn't and it's not working. No, I think it's working, but you don't realize it as much as I thought you would. Mm, no, this was not quite how well I wanted this to go. But luckily I don't have to wait for hours for this little creature to leave. But I, I can also restart, this was already lost. So yeah, I, I really, really like this change so far. Maybe it will need some additional tweaking. I have to create a way bigger creature farm in the, c in the center if I want to survive the late game, I think. I need more eggs. And that's actually one really cool thing about this game. Sometimes levels look completely impossible, but because it has this as it has this exponential growth in your own creatures, you can really get a ton of creatures if you do it correctly. And then suddenly it looks super easy. But this was ob <laughs> obviously not the the correct way to solve this level. So let's try again. We need to beat this. Or at least I want to beat this. Uh -huh. It's my stream, I do whatever I want, you know. Oh, hi Chris. Thanks for joining the stream. I'll read your messages very soon. I just have to focus very heavily and you already distracted me, Chris. This is your fault. This is on you, this loss. In case you need some context, we're currently experimenting with dynamic game speed. So it gets faster the fewer creatures you have. Damn. <laughs> and I really like the change, but I can't beat my own game anymore. Because the level is too hard, so uh, what did you write? Oh, you, you've been here for longer? The game wants you to lose. Yes, it wants you to lose. Uh, wait a second, this is a bit weird. Where's my mouse? Ah, here it is. <laughs> Yes, I'm very, I'm very professional streamer. Don't, don't judge me. Neighbor, me meditate on stream. Hmm. Shall we do another meditation? Oh, hey, good pixels. Ay! Ay! <laughs> Welcome to my crappy stream. Do you want to see my uh, my cool overlay, my awesome interface? Welcome. Let's do another meditation. Mm. <gasps> oh, I think I remember rule three now. I think it was don't meditate on stream. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. That was definitely it. So, <laughs> um, you think it looks a little too fast at the end, yeah. But honestly, you wouldn't really have a higher chance to win if the game was running faster. If the game were running faster. Just to be completely honest, you would probably lose anyways, it just would take way longer. But I think 
one thing we could try as well is to give the player control over the speed. So maybe just if you press the space button or something like that, it goes faster. So we can try that very easily. Maybe that feels good. So we just do a normal uh, game speed uh, equals one, but if you press check without uh, space, then we set the game speed to two. Wow, awesome. Yes, I know. I know. It's clearly perfect. I'm the biggest and best streamer on the entire internet right now. Yep. And I do the most interesting stuff as well. Just look at all those beautiful numbers. This is a stream about numbers. What's your favorite number? Please post your favorite number in the chat. Mine is uh, 71. What's your favorite number? And also, what's your favorite formula? Please tell me. Okay. Let's actually test the game and see how this feels. Okay, I can't notice the difference. We need to go higher. <coughs> higher. Way higher. Higher, higher, higher. So if you press space, it goes with four times of the original speed. How about that? We should notice that. Yep. Oh, actually, I think that's a, that feels really good. Oh, yes, please. But don't say anything wrong. I warn you. But at least you agree on the on the best part. Yeah. That's right. What's a bit confusing about the speed up is that you don't really get good feedback about if you're currently speeding up the animations still go with the same speed. Just the movement speeds are increased and stuff like that. So maybe we should increase the speed of everything or we should find a different way to give the player feedback on when he's increasing the speed. Maybe some sort of effect on the screen so you just see that you're in speed mode right now. And actually now that we have speed mode I think we can lower the default speed quite a bit. Maybe by 25%. Oops, not to 25%. <laughs> Only by 25%. The second favorite thing, or your favorite number is eight. Why is it eight? Let's see what level eight is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is your favorite level then, because it's level eight. Hmm. My level doesn't exist yet, my favorite level. I think I accidentally skipped past the really hard level. Oh, that's too bad because I would have lost again anyway. Oh, hedge faster, hedge faster. Very nice. 
So if you just want to speed it up a little bit, you can just hit the space bar for a second. And I think it's a really cool feature for speedrunners because they can just keep the space button pressed <laughs> and try to beat it really fast this way. Yeah, so maybe giving the player the control over the speed is quite a smart thing to do. But I don't really like the lower speed either, so let's let's go with a 1 for the normal speed and then we can make another button for slow-mo mode. So what would be a good button for that? Maybe Alt. So if you pre uh, alt alt, then let's just do set the speed to 0 point five to the half to half maybe, or well, let's go a little more extreme. Let's set, say 0 point four, so you can notice the difference. So now you have two additional keys, space and alt, for controlling the speed. But obviously you don't have to use the speed keys if you don't want to use them. So that's probably a really good solution. Um, what was the button for next level again? Uh, oops. Do you wanna play this level? Okay, let's lose again. Try hard mode activated! Now I'm in slow-mo mode, you probably couldn't tell because there's really no good feedback on that. And yes, maybe we should just change the animation speed as well if you go into slow-mo mode. If we do it, maybe we just should do it correctly. <laughs> So maybe I can beat this in slow-mo mode. Mm. So for a game stage like this, this is the correct speed. But for early game this would have been too slow. And actually, you see, if the game's a little slower and you have more time to do all the things you wanna do, it's way easier to beat this. That's speed mode. And if you're in speed mode, you probably lose really quickly because all of your creatures are flying out of the screen. Yeah, so I really like this. Now if you're getting bored or if you wanted to go faster, you can just hit the space bar. That's cool. But there are some changes we'll have to make <laughs> because that's not, I just saw that's not working perfectly. For example, if I uh, press the space bar, enemies really speed up and then when I release the space bar, they keep their current speed. So that's not how it's supposed to go at all. Yeah, pretty sad that we're not using Unity at the moment because um, fixing this problem in Unity would literally just be one line of code because it's really easy to change the game speed in Unity. 
In Game Maker, I literally have to go in, into every single object and make some changes. And yes, after that it works, but it's a lot of work. Du, 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 du. But still, I kind of feel like the ending is kind of anti-climactic. Anti there's nothing special, nothing special is going to happen here. Mm. So we should definitely, I think we should definitely go one of two ways. Either we, the player loses if he doesn't beat the level quickly enough or he just wins if he survives long enough. So both of those I guess would be possible. Or maybe you have a different solution for this problem. But I s I'm still not happy with the end game. Oh my god, don't write so much, I cannot read so much. Mm, yes, but I, you, there could be a button on the screen you mean, for speed mode, but I think it's way cooler if you can switch back and forth just by, by keeping a button pressed. So currently it's like this, if I keep the space button pressed, I'm in speed mode and when I release it, I'm going out of speed mode so you can control it kind of well, how, f how far you want to go. Kappa. Oh, Josia, hi. That's awkward. He <laughs> he <laughs> he. Currently working on my game a little bit. My first crappy stream. Do you want to see my, my cool overlay? I need to show it to everybody who joins the stream. <laughs> hi. Okay. Why no singing? Um, um, this is uh, not uh, not for singing. This channel. Uh, maybe I should make a music channel with a lot of singing. Actually, you need to apply DYO. Let me search if I can can find it. It's a really cool game. Just a random thought I just had. Don't know where it's coming from. Um, don't find it when you type it into Google. That's sad. Game. Okay. Here, DYO. Check that out. <laughs> just a random thought. Don't know. Oh, I got that. <laughs> so it's available on Steam, and it's kind of fun. If you want to play a cool co-op game with a friend, it's a really cool lo local co-op game. Try it if you have friends. I don't have any, so I can't play it. But yeah, so got sidetracked again. But I think um, the manual, um, letting the player choose the speed of the game is probably a bit a really good solution. I don't know. I don't really know if this is the correct way to do it <laughs> with the with the space key. If you hold down the space key, that it speeds up that way. I think it works. We just need a little better feedback if you're currently in speed mode or not. And I probably want to speed up the animations and all that sort of good stuff as well so you can really tell the difference but there's a lot of work i don't really want to do that now and it's not a thing that's very pleasant to do in game maker so i'm kind of happy i'm doing it now and not when my game is finished because then it would be so much work that i don't even want to think about it What is friends? I don't understand that question. Um, 
Yeah. Hi Max, have you seen my beautiful overlay? I need to show it to everybody. Actually, it's really confusing. I'm not good at multi multitasking. This would usually go way more quickly. If I wasn't streaming, you guys are slowing me down so much. Don't even know what to tell you. Uh, and uh, it's really hard to focus. Maybe I should end the stream soon, but actually I'm streaming again at 17 o'clock UTC plus one. How's that time zone called again? Um, CET, I don't know, 17 o'clock, be there. I'm streaming with Sylvester Hansen, another indie developer, and we're just gonna talk about our games and stuff. And yeah, probably gonna be quite interesting. He's a really cool dude and has a lot of interesting stuff to tell. And I just wanted to see if all the streaming thing works. I didn't really expect people to join the stream. We're at six viewers again. Wow, that's, uh, that's brilliant. I'm loving this. Irony, yes. I see, that makes sense. Because I don't have any friends. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you ask what is friends, now I get it. Ah, ah you see, I don't have friends and I'm stupid. Ah, what a wonderful combination. Um, actually, I think we're done with the speed stuff for now because um, continuing with that will require a lot of boring work. Let's do something interesting instead. Let's create a spawner for the new enemy type we created. In case you just joined, I, I, I'll show you the new enemy type I just came up with, okay? It's a very, very beautiful enemy. Uh, the first one is this right here, just weird blobs that expand over time and you better destroy them before they get too big. And then we have these creatures, they don't have custom graphics yet, so I just reused the graphics from from the other enemies. But what's special about them is that when you kill them, they spawn <laughs> these blobs. So you need to be a bit more careful about when you destroy the enemies, a bit more strate strategical. You can't just destroy all of them at once because then you can't really handle all the blobs that appear. Sounds of silence. How do you sing sounds of silence? I'm not talking a lot, I know that's because I can't multitask and even the little bit of multitasking I'm doing right now is already too much for me. Don't judge me. Trying my best. Song of silence. You already got meditation. You're not satisfied with that, you want singing as well. Well, I need music for singing and the music is way too quiet to sing, so, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you like my song of silence? It's pretty good, huh? Oh, my, my favorite end screen, that's actually the the wind screen. I'll keep that in the game. If you play it through the entire game, you will, will see this, this screen. That's a good idea, isn't it? Oops. So that's uh, the stream page. I think it's probably not a big problem if you see that. As long as you don't see my stream key, Whew. that could have gone wrong. 
streaming expert confirmed. Yes, indeed. Um, I'm really bad with songs. If any question starts with do you know dot 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 do you know this band do you know this artist the chance is about 99 percent that my answer is gonna be no do you know barack obama no and the same goes for <laughs> pretty much everything you could ask me oh hello darkness my old friend yes Oh yes, I could sing that. I know that song. Hello darkness, my old friend. But how does the text continue? I don't know. The we? Oh, of course. <laughs> Please guys, don't ask me questions that start with do you know? Because the answer is no. I can already tell you. And you're just gonna get me in awkward situations. <laughs> So I'm just gonna ignore those questions. Don't ask me what I know, because I know nothing. Peace. Let's do some more meditation. <clears throat> so we can focus again. Okay, I think I used that meditation joke up a little too much already, so... But who cares? Let's make it a running gag. <clears throat> I'm a weird, awkward dude standing in this room talking to random people on the internet. I'm so cringy, I become one with the cringe. You can feel the cringe in your toe, in your nose. You can feel the cringe in your entire body. Can you feel it? <laughs> okay, I think I'm ready. To continue now. <laughs> so I wanted to create a spawner for the new enemy type to see how that plays. Luckily I have a correct parent set up for those spawners so it should be really easy to create this just need to change a couple of variables see guys that's how it should be not like in all of my other crappy objects so which enemy type do we want to create we want to create enemy blobber and let's just keep the rest the same for now maybe can Spawn a couple more enemies, 20 maybe, should be about right. Then let's create another room. Mm. Why is this not inherited, Game Maker? This is so annoying. Just inherit all those stupid layers, okay? So, what do we do now? We're gonna go on enemy spot because that's where the spawners are and then we're gonna add... You know, I need to rename this. This is... Uh, blobber spawn. And then I think we're gonna make one more enemy that I want to try and then we're probably gonna end the stream because I'm getting really distracted and it's really hard to focus on all of those things at once. And honestly, if you just end the stream, I, that stops me from doing more cringy things. So that's probably for the better. I'm not quite getting what you're trying to tell me there. The best voice of Sound of Silence is old. Ah, alt. Ah, I don't know what that in 
English means. So you mean the, the voice pitch? Oh yes, another proof for my stupidity. So, okay. Yeah, I see. <laughs> Old. <laughs> that wasn't quite the correct translation. See, every time I interact with you, I completely lose where I was. Let's just put two of those in here. Maybe shoot one at the center. Ma let's make this a bit asymmetric. Asymmetric levels are more interesting, so. Uh, gonna play this. Sound of silence. So what's the best strategy here? Should I try to kill them really quickly? How do we go about this? Oh no, I think this is gonna be another pretty hard level. Okay, we can restart. Speed this up a little. Hmm. Oh no. How do we keep those enemies in check. Oh no, I created too many blobs. That was probably not a smart idea. No. Okay. That's a bit too hard. Let's delete one of them. <laughs> Way too hard. That's probably hard enough. One of them in the center. Still six viewers. It's amazing. Why do you stick around here? Is there anything interesting here to be seen? Oh yeah. I skipped through all of the levels again. And cast an error message. Uh, one of my favorites. Uh, ba -da -ba -da. This is the one I wanted to play, right. I think we're gonna make a little break after, after I played this level. As you might have realized, my focus has started dropping even below the normal levels of stupidity. So probably better to make a little break. Take a little break before we stream again in the afternoon at 17 o'clock. Tune in again because I'm talking to Sylvester Hansen, which is an awesome dude. And it's gonna be pretty fun. <laughs> Actually streaming is a pretty funny experience. Okay, I think I can make it this time. But close one, definitely a close one.
Okay, I didn't make it. Still too hard. And I thought I could beat two of those. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Let's wrap this stream up because I'm getting tired and stupid. Um, yeah, we can do a little end discussion if you want. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat and then we can wrap things up. Uh, yeah, but I have to say this was a quite enjoyable experience. It was not all that effective. <laughs> Let's be honest. I didn't really get all that much done. Oh yeah, your stream as well. That's cool. I have to visit your stream some someday. Where where can you find where can we find your stream? Do you stream on YouTube or do you stream on Twitch? And when will you stream next time? I need to learn from the pros. Twitch, okay. Oh, so after we did all that meditation stuff, let's do a bit of stretching as well, because stretching is really important. Oh. Any question, any stupid comments, because if not, I'm gonna wrap it up. You got three more seconds, okay? I count to three. Two. One. <laughs> okay, I don't feel quite ready for leaving yet. I feel there's more, more to say, a little more to wrap my first stream up. I think this is gonna be really a really fun video to look back on in, <laughs> in a couple of years, my first stream. It's gonna be so cringy if I watch this in three, three years. If I watch this in five years, it's gonna be so cringy. And yeah, I thought streaming was way more stressful and way more difficult. Actually, it's not, not that bad. I think we can do it again, is what I'm trying to say with this. Okay, you're streaming at 19 o'clock. Yeah, but you don't have enough time to stream. I totally get that. I don't really have enough time to stream as well because I have to edit YouTube videos all day long. Luckily, the YouTube videos for the weekend are already done, but I still need to create one for Monday because I don't want to have the stress on Monday. I'm really trying to produce them ahead of time a little bit, but <laughs> it's really hard to keep up. And there's a really long video coming up on tomorrow. Tomorrow there's gonna be a really long video. <laughs> that took me forever to edit, so I hope you like it. But probably not, because you already know how to use Game Maker. Winky face. <laughs> gonna be a tutorial. <laughs> but a really interesting one. I haven't seen that concept before. It's a, a new kind of tutorial, though. Very curious to see what you think. <laughs> No, we'll see. No, but not everything needs to be f perfect right from the beginning. That's just my philosophy, you know. And I'd rather start out crappy and work my way up. So that's how we're gonna do it. And I think one of the first things I really want to improve is my sound quality because yes, it's not that bad, but it's also not that good either. And I think sound is probably one of the most important things for YouTube. And for streaming, if the audio is bad, that scares people off way more than if the video is bad. I'm just using the, the webcam of my laptop, so I think that's not a big problem. But using the wrong mic can be a big problem. Because then you hear all of my mouth sounds, all of my breathing, and then I just need to go away. You know what I mean? In four hours, yes, at, at 17 o'clock. That's in four hours, exactly. That's when we're gonna be all online again and I'm not gonna be alone. I'm gonna be with Sylvester Hansen or however you pronounce his name and we're gonna have a nice talk. 
Actually, I have multiple mics. The one I'm using right here is a Zen 7. That's just a USB microphone. I also have a bit of a better microphone that I use for recording sounds and a little audio interface that I use with it. But it has really weird recording dynamic. I can't really use it for YouTube and streaming. So I'll have to use this USB mic for now and then someday, someday we'll have a better mic. So I'm gonna fix it one day. <laughs> You're in England. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so basically I'm streaming uh, at 17 o'clock in UTC plus one CET. So you can look that up in what time zone that is, but it's, it's just gonna be in, in four hours because four plus three equals seven. I forgot rule number one again, never do math on stream. Can only go wrong. <laughs> okay, so let's wrap it up. Thanks for joining the stream. Appreciate it. I need, I need an end screen or something like that. I don't really have an end screen, but I just can turn off my camera. Ah! Now I'm gone. And yeah. That's pretty much it. <laughs> You're in Germany, okay. But why are you in England? You're in England and Germany at once. Okay. So, the, the last shot of the stream will just me breaking the microphone. That's very nice. Bye everybody, <laughs> see you next time. <laughs>